Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about a traffic analysis software called Synchro. Synchro is used in traffic operations for design and optimization of signalized and unsignalized intersections. Uh, it can also be used to analyze the existing operating conditions of a traffic facility using uh, several performance measures such as level of service and traffic delay. So uh, without further ado, let me dive into the software right away. As you can see on your screen, uh, the user interface of uh, the software is Synchro. Currently, we are using the version 11. Uh, Synchro is a software from Trafficware. So this is, the, this is not the latest version, but uh, it has the functionality uh, that, that should be sufficient for us for now. So um, as you can see, uh, there is a map on the screen. So that is from Bing Maps. Uh, Synchro uses Bing Maps as the base map layer. And uh, at the top center of the screen, you can see uh, scenario one. And uh, what that means is that Synchro has a scenario manager that allows us to manage and create multiple scenarios to uh, supply different traffic volumes and signal timing plans for the same network and uh, in that way it will be easier to manage uh, manage the network for instance uh, a single network may have different plan on the am peak hour uh, time and the midday time and uh, evening time and uh, emergency conditions so to manage all those scenarios for a single um, network scenario manager is very helpful so uh, let's let's pick a site for our uh, demonstration today and then uh, from there on we'll learn how to build a model and how to uh, run the analysis using synchro so let's go to Bing Maps and then search for an intersection uh, let me search fourth street and slide Avenue Lubbock Okay, it took me to okay here it is so um, here's the intersection of 4th Street and Slide Road and we will be uh, developing a network from this intersection to the one on the east that is 4th Street and Toledo Avenue so to build a network in synchro uh, there are two things that we need to understand they are links and nodes Links are uh, the road segments, whereas nodes are the uh, location of the intersections. So to add a link, uh, we can go to the Home tab on the menu bar and then select Add Link. And let me create a link from extending beyond Slide Road to beyond uh, Toledo Avenue. Uh, let me do that again. Okay, so we have the major corridor. Now let's also add the intersecting approaches. Uh, here is the first one. And there is a T intersection in the middle here. Let me add that one too. And uh, the four way intersection at Toledo Avenue. Okay, so now we have added the required links. And as you can see, this link denotes the road segment. We'll be adding the lanes after this. And the node here, it denotes the intersection. So there are three intersections in our network that we need to uh, design a signal timing plan for and optimize it. So as you can see, when I pan the, uh, when I try to pan the map, uh, the link network that I just developed moves. So we don't want that to happen and we want it to be anchored to the map. So there is an anchor button on the Bing tab. So if I click this, then I can move the map when I pan it. So let me now zoom into the first intersection. And um, let me remove the anchor for some time and replace the link at the center and then anchor it back again. So now we need to define the number of lanes and uh, uh, all the approaches for this intersection. So first, let me open 
uh, Google Earth in another tab. same intersection yeah it's right here okay so when I zoom into this intersection I can see the lane arrangements of this intersection so there is uh, let, let's look at the northbound approach first there is a left turn lane two through lanes and one right turn lane so going back to synchro I select this link double click it and then define the lane arrangements uh, at the option uh, lane settings for lanes and sharing so there's one left turn lane two through lanes and one right turn lane okay so this uh, so the lane has been set up as you can see in the map here uh, but the thing is so the right turn lane here, uh, the two there are just two lanes uh, going now northbound, and there are two uh, there is one left turn lane and one right turn lane that is uh, added later on. So we have to define that length here, and how we can do that is for the left turn lane, uh, we define the storage length. For now, let me just add uh, 450 feet. And similarly for the right bound lane I add 450 so now as you can see on the map what you see is that the storage length of the left turn and right turn lanes are defined and the lane continues uh, forward with just two lanes which is close to the actual condition and you can also see that the departing lanes are already defined we don't need to uh, define this again because there are two through lanes and which will end up to the two uh, departing lanes now let's move to the westbound approach and let's go back to the map here you can see if it's difficult we can go to the uh, street view Okay, there are uh, there is one left turn lane and two, three uh, through lanes, but the third one, but the outermost one, uh, is a right turn lane as well. So to model this, we add we add one one left turn lane and three uh, through lanes with one right turn okay so this seems to work but here again we need to define the storage length for the left turn lane so let's set 450 as the default length for our network and the three departing lanes are already mapped so we can move the length and move the orientation of the link to set it properly on our map so okay we have the westbound approach ready now let's go to the eastbound approach but before that let's check it on the map okay so there is one right turn lane and one two three three through lanes and one left turn lane So the eastbound has one left turn, three through lanes, and one right turn lane. Let me also define the storage length, 450 feet, 450 feet. Okay, so we have the eastbound approach ready. Now let's go to the southbound. The southbound has one right turn, two through lanes, and one left turn. One 
left turn two through lanes and one right turn okay so this uh, makes our network our uh, intersection ready let's move on to the next intersection over here um, let's check it on the map as well okay this one okay so this is a stop control intersection and there are three through lanes uh, the eastbound approach three through lanes on the westbound approach and just one lane that either goes left or right on the northbound approach so let's try to model that on the northbound approach there is one lane that goes either north either left or right and then on the east approach there are three lanes through lanes with one right turn there's no left turn over here and on the westbound approach it's uh, similar but there is a left turn lane here and the through lanes are just three through there and there's no right turn there so since we have a left turn here let's again model it model its uh, storage length 450 feet okay so now as you can see here on the map there is a two-way left turn lane in the middle right uh, this one is also a two-way left turn lane so what we can do is we can uh, change this to a two-way left turn lane and uh, we can do that later in the signal uh, timing settings uh, I'll show that later so let's move on to the next intersection uh, this is the Toledo Avenue and Fourth Street. Okay. Um, so the south intersection, has, south approach has one through and left and one right. And the east one has it's similar to the previous one so one left turn and three through lanes but here a right turn lane is also present so let's do that and for the southbound right uh, through and left left lane right through lane and right turn again and for this one for the eastbound there are three lanes four lanes one is left and another one is right plus through so there is there is one left turn lane here and three through lanes with the outermost one allow me to turn right okay let's also define the storage lane oh no 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 we have to define another left turn lane over here let's define the uh, left turn lane storage length 450 for this one and for this one too okay yeah now this seems correct so in the middle again here this is a two-way left turn lane so which can be changed later in the uh, signal timing settings so now in this way we have developed the model developed our network this will be our corridor so this uh, in the middle one is a sig unsignalized intersection with a stop sign and the outer ones are signalized intersection so after we have developed the network we don't need the base map now so we can turn off uh, we can toggle the Bing map off and just look at our network here so now the lens after the lane settings is complete let's move on to the next step that is volume settings 
so in the volume settings what we will do is we will uh, add the traffic volumes for each approach so we can add some arbitrary traffic volumes in this case but if we have to work on a real project we will be given this information so let me add some volumes here okay so i added all the uh, traffic volumes for each approach so there uh, yeah as you can see here um, there is no lane uh, separate for the westbound right right but still I have added uh, right turn volume that means this right turn will uh, take place at this lane so as you can see the traffic volumes that we supplied is displayed on the map as well this makes it easier to visualize and uh, there are several other parameters that can be changed in the uh, volume settings um, I will attach a manual a synchro manual uh, along with this video and you can follow that to know what these things uh, mean and how they can be used but for now let's uh, change some uh, factors like the heavy vehicle percentage let's increase it to 8 And uh, if we have to uh, optimize, I mean, design the signal timing for uh, for the future, we need to add the growth factor. We may sometimes need to uh, change the peak hour factor as well, depending on upon the site. So this depends on what kind of input data we have been given to design the uh, signal. So after the volume settings, let's move on to the next step that is uh, signal timing. So we again select this node and right click to get to this uh, window here. So we have done the lane settings, the volume settings is complete. Now let's go to the timing settings. So here, um, okay, before that, uh, we have an option ring and barrier on the menu bar over here. So if we click that, then we can set the uh, sequence of the phases uh, in the ring and barrier diagram. So if this is what matches with the signal timing plan where you have been given, then you can just leave it default. Otherwise, you need to change it such that the order of phase sequence, it uh, matches with our ring and barrier diagram. So for that, we need to go to non-standard phasing and make the changes and select OK. So for now, let's just uh, leave this as default. And uh, in the timing settings, we have to take care of this control type. So as you might be familiar there are different traffic signal control types pre-timed actuated uncoordinated semi-actuated uncoordinated actuated coordinated unsignalized and roundabout so um, there is a traffic uh, signal timing manual that describes in detail about these uh, control types and what are what are the parameters that need to be taken care of for this so to for today's demonstration we'll stick to the pre-timed timed uh, control type that is a fixed signal length that is the green time and the yellow and red times for each of the phases uh, remain constant throughout all cycles and we need to provide the cycle length here let me say 75 seconds but we don't need to worry that much about this now because later we will optimize this uh, entire network and get the most optimum cycle length so in addition to that um, so the lens and searing, traffic volume. So for the turn type, uh, the left turn lanes, we need to set it to permitted plus protected uh, because uh, the vehicles need to pass um, in the yellow flashing light. So let's say permitted, let's select the permitted flashing yellow sign. Let's check the boxes. And there are some other things that you need to notice here is the minimum initial, minimum split, and total split. So this is uh, mainly useful for the actuated ones where detectors are placed. And once the detector detects a vehicle, the signal operation changes. 
So as you can notice here, the minimum split and the total split is same because this is a pre-timed uh, signal timing plan which does not change. So the minimum time given to any phase is the total time given to that phase. So the yellow time here is 3.5 seconds, all red time is one second. So these are the factors, parameters that need to be changed depending on uh, what kind of uh, signal timing plan you want to design. And uh, there's another speed limit. So the eastbound and westbound lanes are 4th Street. So let me add 50 miles per hour. And the northbound and throughbound is a uh, slide road. So let me add 45. So depending on the site and uh, the signal timing specifications, you have to change all these parameters. The signal timing manual contains the detail, detailed explanation of what these parameters mean. So uh, at last you will get this uh, ring and barrier diagram for each phase. For example, phase one and phase five are the ones uh, that move when uh, the signal starts, signal cycle starts. And uh, both of them are left turns. So these end after 9.5 seconds and the through uh, phase two and phase six begin. And in the same way for the next uh, approach, phase three and phase seven left turn goes and phase four and phase eight continues after that. So we don't have to take uh, this as the final signal timing plan because it will be optimized later. So after the signal timing settings is done, we move to the phasing settings. So here, uh, this is very, very helpful when we have the uh, actuated coordinated or actuated signal timing plan actuate uh, control type so you can see here the minimum gap time the vehicle extensions what these means is that uh, once there is a gap extending three seconds the uh, vehicle the phase is stopped and the green is given to the other phase so these things uh, time to reduce and the lead, uh, lead lead lag phases, offsets, all these things are uh, set in the phasing settings. So this information is also taken from the signal timing specifications. So for the pre-time signal, what we need to do is we need to change the walk time and uh, don't walk times. So there are pedestrian phases that move along with uh, the corresponding uh, through moving phases like northbound through phase number two, so the walk time for this is uh, s s 7 seconds and 11 seconds. So we'll just leave this as default for now. And if any any of the phase it does not have a pedestrian phase, then we can just uncheck this. Um, let's, let's leave it for uh, default now. And uh, here we, we need to supply the pedestrian volume uh, per hour. So let's say 100. Uh, 150, 75, 50, or something like that. So after the phasing settings, uh, the next one is uh, simulation settings. But before going there, let me uh, go to the signal timing optimization. So after, after supplying the input parameters, we need to um, optimize the signal timing plan before viewing it in the simulation. So I haven't uh, input the volumes and settings, uh, other uh, timing and phasing settings for other two intersections. Uh, I think uh, in the similar manner, you can finish all three intersections. Let me open a file that uh, I completed before. Okay, let me turn this map off. And yeah, the traffic volumes and everything is uh, set over here. And uh, you can see here, there is a stop sign, right? So how to model that, go to timing settings and on control type, just select unsignalized intersection. And the eastbound through and westbound through lanes, there are two options, either yield, stop or free. Since this is the major corridor, the vehicles on the corridor do not stop, they are free. The vehicles on the minor approach stops. So we need to set eastbound through and westbound through as free and northbound lane as stop. And uh, also about the two-way left turn median, let me uncheck this first and let's go back here. As you can see here, uh, 
the the two-way left turn lane is not defined here like in our previous uh, model so to define that we just check the two-way left turn lane median for the eastbound through and westbound through so what that does is it adds a, a two-way left turn lane in the middle so that's pretty much for the model uh, the network settings for now and uh, let's move on to optimize and then cycle length uh, let's save it and okay so to optimize the network we need to supply the range of cycle length so let's start from 50 and the maximum is 150 at increments of uh, 5 seconds each and uh, so here we select the entire network to optimize the entire network and offset optimization let's just leave it to medium and then there will be a single timing file that will be exported out as a csv so let's start the optimization process okay so the process is complete now so considering all of the input features that we have given this uh, optimization function it optimizes our uh, network it op optimizes the signal timing plan for example you remember in the previous one it was 9.5 seconds it changed it to 9 seconds and the cycle length we supplied um, 75 or 50 uh, now it has changed to 85 it depends on uh, it depends on the entire network and the signal timing that allows for the uh, minimum delay and maximum level of service is selected uh, is selected as the final signal timing plan so this is uh, pretty much the basics of uh, the software now uh, to visualize what we have modeled we can go to the simulation tab here and uh, a complementary software of uh, synchro studio that is sim traffic opens up and you, we can visualize the movement of vehicles through this network based on our traffic volumes and all the timing and phasing parameters that we have so we can take a look at it in detail and then uh, figure out if there is something that we have missed using the simulation and then go back again make the changes and uh, go back to the site and for example we just added 450 meter feet as the storage length of the right turn lane we can go back and then measure the actual right turn lane, lane length and then change it and there are several other parameters that uh, we haven't changed here so you may need to uh, follow the signal timing uh, manual to take a deeper look into it the purpose of this tutorial was to just uh, get you familiarized with the interface and what we are trying to do and uh, what are the basic uh, basic operations of this software so after everything uh, we can finally see the report let's go to the reports tab select intersection and uh, we will select the highway capacity manual 2010 that's the latest one available for signalized intersections and uh, let's go to detail check this we need for the entire network or let's select just for one intersection now first one and if we preview we get all the information about the uh, signal so overall the intersection summary is that the uh, HCM level of service is C and the delay is 22.9 seconds we can see the approach based delay and uh, other things okay here is the lane group delay for each lane so in this manner we can inspect how the uh, intersection performs based on our optimization and based on our development so basically this is the introduction of synchro i will attach the signal timing manual and uh, a 
manual that I have prepared for you guys to follow everything that uh, I went through in this video uh, so that it will be easier so you guys uh, can give it a try when you when you get uh, access to the uh, license of Synchro 11 so in the next uh, tutorial we will be looking at the software uh, Transync and uh, this is it for uh, this tutorial this lecture thank you